I will say I'll start it all the way back with I was a junior in high school and Top Gun came out. So being an impressionable young person uh, like everybody else, I walked out of Top Gun and I said, I want to do that for the rest of my life. Mm. Uh, the friend I was with kind of laughed. I was like, sure, buddy. You know, went home, told my parents, and even though my parents were, my dad was uh, Air Force, retired Air Force. Oh, he wasn't okay. a pilot, but uh, he was like, uh, let's just have a plan B. You so know? did you grow up then in the Air Force community as a military brat, per se, as they call it? I did, but uh, my dad retired when I was in fourth grade. So I okay. kind of don't really recall the bouncing around. Got it. Um, but yeah, I saw it and I was just like, I want to fly fighters for the rest of my life. Hmm. And went off to college, didn't get into the Air Force Academy, so I was kind of heartbroken over that because that was kind of the easier path. Um, went off to college, graduated from college with an engineering degree, applied for flight school, finally got in, took a little while. Civilian flight school at that time? Nope, uh, military okay. Air Force flight school uh, to become an Air Force pilot because otherwise I was just going to be an Air Force officer. So oh, I joined wow. the Air Force um, through a schol through scholarship. And, but I was going to be a maintenance officer. So I started my first four years. Like I said, like I worked for a living. <laughs> Actually was in maintenance. Um, and then I kept applying for pilot training. And then once I got in, um, what airplane you get out of pilot training is completely based on your performance. Interesting. So w did well enough to get into a fighter. I flew the F-15 first, which is the little tiny one on the name tag. And uh, as opposed here. to fighters, for people listening, the other path might be what transport, like a C-17 type aircraft. Sure, there's kind of fighters and then there's bombers. Those are the folks that are kind of go out and execute warfare from a kinetic perspective, you know, missiles, bombs, that Got sort it. of stuff. Then you have refuelers and transport, which are now primarily logistics, either moving people, things, bombs. As we recently the saw the so. events in Afghanistan, and we, we won't get into that, but yes, okay, I'm with you. But yeah, so <laughs> anybody that wants to fly, you're happy to fly anything. Interesting. Right, so you don't, you don't really go into pilot training thinking I have to have a fighter. Uh, you want, a lot of folks want fighters, and I, I did. But it was, I'd be happy to fly anything for a job. And then I flew the F-15 for three years. Uh, to be able to fly the F-117, the, the, the jet in front of us here, uh, you had to have 500 hours in a primary fighter. So you had to be an experienced fighter. How many hours, I'm sorry? 500. 500 which, hours. That's hard to imagine. So what that means is about three years of experience. Got it. Of flying one of the frontline fighters, like an F-15, F-16. And is it a application mm -hmm. process to move to that, a selection process? How does that work, so it, to speak? It's kind of behind the scenes. Um, so they look at your career development and whether you want to go fly. It's in the middle of New Mexico, hmm. which a lot of folks are like, I don't want to go live. You know, I like New Mexico. I met my wife in New Mexico, got married in New Mexico. Uh, I think New Mexico is beautiful, but a lot of people don't want to. Uh, I was living on the beach in Fort Walton Beach flying fighters. There you go. You know, initially. But they're like, do you want to go do this? And I was like, I would love to go do it. Wow. Um, to be part of the program because with the airplane, there's the flying piece, which is really neat, but there's also the technology piece. And you know, I'm a nerd, self-professed. Uh, I wanted to know, you know, how's it stealthy? How's it fly? You know, all the behind the the super secret stuff. I wanted to be read in on all that, and uh, that was one of the benefits of the program. And what year was that? So, that Ish. was '99 when I got picked up for the program, and then oh, wow. I actually went out and started flying it in early 2000. So caging ourselves to 9-11, I had been flying for a little over a year and a half, you know, when 9-11 happened. So what, I mean, beyond the shape, from a, from a layman's term, I see the shape, I'm like, oh, that's cool. Uh, you know, I, I see it on TV years ago, here and there, I'm like, oh, that looks cool. But what makes it so different from an aircraft's perspective? Well, it was born out of the, the late 70s. So we came out of Vietnam as a military saying we needed more tactical aircraft. We need more fighters. And we came out with the series of the F-14, which was featured in Top Gun, F-15, F-16, F-18. All those came out, but they wanted something that was different that was going to be a true stealth aircraft, the invisible man, if you will. Um, and we'll get to that later. Not quite invisible, but yeah. invisible enough. And so to design it, instead of going to the aeronautical engineers and saying, design an airplane, and then going to the stealth engineers and saying, make it stealthy, they did it backwards. They said, okay, that's not working, right? Because that keeps, we keep getting the same type of airplane when we do that. So we're gonna go to the stealth engineers first. Interesting. You guys figure out how to make it stealthy. And then once they came up with this crazy shape and it's the stealthiness is largely, 90% um, of it is the shape. And when you look at, if you were to shine, shine a flashlight at this, the, the surfaces are all, you know, they're multifaceted, if you will. It really wouldn't, very little would reflect back at you. So when you think of it from a radar beam perspective, you know, radar beam hits it and then it scatters versus being reflected right back at it, which is what 
you know, gives it a stealthiness. And the other 10% of stealthiness is this uh, black surface card called radar absorbent material, or RAM. And it's basically uh, a honeycomb structure that kind of captures the rays, if you will, and kind of holds on to them. So they designed huh. it that way and said, hey, this will be stealthy. And then they gave it over to the aeronautical engineers and say, hey, you guys need to make this fly. So radar waves are hit it, and instead of the waves bouncing back and collecting a signal or whatever have you, they're being dispersed. Right, they'll deflect, and then some are being straight absorbed. Interesting. So, but yeah, then they handed it to the guys to make it fly, and they're like, well, that won't fly. I mean, look at it, it doesn't even look like a normal airplane. And they're like, well, you need to make it fly. <laughs> and if you put enough motor on anything, you can, you know, anything will fly. But, you know, it won't fly, you know, necessarily. The aerodynamics of the F-117 are different, really, than any other airplane out there. And it's run by computers, uh, very complex. You, as the pilot, still sit there and do the, you know, you have a stick and throttle, just like any other airplane. But really, the computers are doing all of the movement of the, the control surfaces that are at different angles and things from a normal airplane. So was that difficult or weird for you to fly them? It was different. To learn? It was different. Did you feel like you had less control? Well, it, uh, it was just, it, it didn't respond like an F-15 uh, in being fortunate to fly a frontline fighter like an F-15 or F-16 or any of those F-series that I just talked about. I mean, when you move the stick to the left and pull back, you get a 9G turn. I mean, you are moving right now. Wow. Um, in this thing, it was a little, it wasn't quite instant. And it wobbles a little bit, which is weird. Uh, one of the nicknames is Wobbly Goblin. Um, from when you go to make moves, it kind of overshoots. There's because some, of such a weird shape, the computer has to control all aspects of it to keep it in flight? Is that what you're saying? You're, you're telling the airplane, here's what I want to do. And instead of a normal aircraft where you would have pulleys and things and you're getting exactly what you asked for, you're actually saying, I want to go left. And the airplane's going, okay, he wants to go left. Let's do this. And then it's like, he doesn't want to do that anymore. And so it ends up overshooting and there's some coupling there that makes it a little bit goofy. Uh, when you first fly it, you think something's wrong with the airplane. Because you know whether, you know, it's not, it's not acting right. But then folks are like, no, that's, <coughs> that's just the way this thing is. It just wobbles a little bit. You'll, you'll forget about it. And you honestly do. After about three flights, you're like, nah, that's just the way it is. 